Dawn Walls was a fantastic actress who you might remember from a little show called Gilligan's Island. But did you know she had to face a terrifying stalker who nearly turned her world upside down? Today, we're going to dive deep into the remarkable life of Dawn Wells while showing rare photos of the actress. Dawn Wells was born on October 18, 1938 and grew up in Reno, Nevada with her parents, Evelyn and Joe Wesley Wells. She attended the Reno High School and graduated from there. Her father ran a construction company in Reno called Wells Cargo. After finishing high school, she headed to Stephens College in Columbia, Missouri, where she majored in chemistry. However, she decided to change things up and switch to the University of Washington in Seattle, where she graduated with a degree in theater arts and design in 1960. In 1959, Wells became Miss Nevada and went on to represent Nevada in the big Miss America 1960 pageant in Atlantic City, New Jersey, becoming a star overnight. She found her way to Hollywood and started her acting journey. Her first gig was on a TV show called The Roaring Twenties and in a movie called The New Interns. In 1964, Wells landed a super special role that would change her life. She became Mary Ann on a show called Gilligan's Island. She played the role in different Gilligan's Island specials, like the cartoon spin-off Gilligan's Planet and three TV movies, Rescue from Gilligan's Island, The Castaways on Gilligan's Island, and The Harlem Globetrotters on Gilligan's Island. Wells playing a cheerful brunette Midwestern farm girl appeared in the series wearing short shorts, midriff tops, and pigtails. In 1992, she returned as Mary Ann in an episode of Baywatch titled, Now Sit Right Back and You'll Hear a Tale. It's like she never left the island. In 1975, she took on her first big role in an independent film called Winterhawk. In that movie, she played a settler from the Western days who gets kidnapped by a Native American chief. She also appeared in other films like The Town That Dreaded Sundown, Return to Bogey Creek, Lover's Knot, Soulmates, Forever For Now, and Super Sucker. In 1993, Wells did things a bit differently by starting a book. She wrote a book called Mary Ann's Gilligan's Island Cookbook with some friends named Ken Beck and Jim Clark. Even Bob Denver, who played Gilligan, wrote a little something in the book. Alan Hale Jr., who was the skipper on the show, shared a family recipe for Kansas chicken and dumplings. They even had recipes named after his character like Skipper's Coconut Cream Pie, Skipper's Navy Bean Soup, and Skipper's Goodbye Rib Eye. In 1997, Dawn starred as Mary Ann from Gilligan's Island in a music video. The song was called Mary Ann by a pop-punk band called Squirt Gun. The song was all about being infatuated with Mary Ann and how great she was. The video became pretty popular, making its way into the top 40 of MTV's alternative music charts. Then, in 2005, Dawn did something quite surprising. She decided to sell the original gingham blouse and shorts outfit she wore as Mary Ann. An auction house called Profiles in History sold it for a whopping $20,700. A lot of money at that time. Wolf continued in the theater world after her time in Gilligan's Island, appearing in nearly 100 different theatrical productions by July 2009. In 2011, she started working on a comedy horror film called Silent But Deadly. It was released in 2012. Fast forward to 2014, Dawn released a book called What Would Mary Ann Do? A Guide to Life, working on it with Steve Stinson. The book was released the same year Gilligan's Island celebrated its 50th anniversary. Dawn Wells never shied away when it came to making a positive impact. She founded the Idaho Film and Television Institute, which was all about education technical training, and boosting the economy in southeastern Idaho. She organized and started something called Spudfest. It was an annual family film and festival held in Driggs, Idaho, and was even sponsored by Idaho Potatoes. Spudfest happened from 2004 to 2008 and featured film premieres. Plus, they had some classic TV stars like Barbara Eden from I Dream of Jeannie and Lou Ferrigno, who played the Incredible Hulk, make appearances. She supported the Denver Foundation, a charity in West Virginia chaired by Dreema Denver, the widow of her Gilligan's Island co-star Bob Denver. In 2009, she even participated in the Denver Foundation's Christmas Wish Celebrity Auction to help raise money for disabled and disadvantaged people in West Virginia. Wells ran a business called Wishing Wells Collections for quite a few years. This business focused on creating clothing for people with limited mobility to help them have more comfortable and accessible clothing. For all her fame, Dawn Wells has kept a low-profile dating life. She married Larry Rosen, a talent agent, on October 27, 1962. 
However, their marriage didn't stand the test of time and they divorced in 1967. Despite their separation, they remained good friends and had no children during their marriage. Dawn mentioned that she and Larry were married for about seven or eight years before their divorce. She attributed their divorce to her busy schedule. With constant traveling for plays and other commitments, it became challenging to settle down with someone. She was also rumored to have dated some of her co-stars, but regarding them, Dawn emphasized that while she had close relationships with the cast, there wasn't any real romance happening on the set. She saw Bob Denver, who played Gilligan as a close friend, and Alan Hale, who portrayed the skipper, was more like a father figure. The professor played by Russell Johnson had all the qualities one might look for in a partner, but their relationship remained professional and friendly. Dawn had great camaraderie with her fellow cast members, including Tina Louise and Jim Backus, but it was more of a friendship than anything romantic. Unfortunately for Dawn Wells, much of her finances were tied up in the housing and banking crash in the late 2000s, so she lost a considerable percentage of the wealth she had gathered. In 2018, a GoFundMe page was set up to help Wells cope with financial trouble from medical care after a fall. A close friend of Don Wells started the GoFundMe page on her behalf. Fans were encouraged to contribute to help with the actress's medical and tax bills. It was an attempt to provide support during what was a challenging financial time for her. Additionally, there were unconfirmed reports that Don Wells owed the IRS around $200,000. Initially, she expressed appreciation for the donations made through the fundraising efforts, but also conveyed her disappointment in her friend for resorting to such measures. In 2020, there were reports of a man stalking Don Wells. Don's manager, Leonard Carter, filed legal documents on her behalf, alleging that Frank Bennett, a man from Ohio, had been harassing the actress. According to the court documents obtained by TMZ, Bennett had been making phone calls and sending letters to Don Wells since March of that year. Carter claimed that Bennett was trying to take advantage of Don's celebrity status and mentioned that she was suffering from dementia. He expressed concern that Bennett had been extracting personal information from Don, including her social security number and even had professed his love for her and desire to marry her. Despite Don's rejection of his advances, Bennett continued to contact her, causing her significant distress. Carter also noted that employees at the assisted living facility where Don resided had witnessed Bennett's intensity and behavior. He considered Bennett to be unstable and capable of physical harm. A judge granted some protection for Don Wells, including a restraining order that barred Bennett from coming within a hundred yards of her. This legal action was taken to ensure her safety and well-being in light of the alleged stalking and harassment. On December 30, 2020, at 82, Don Wells passed on in California due to COVID-19-related complications. In the week leading up to her death, Don Wells had recorded a Happy New Year video to be released on the holiday. She was an iconic figure and she will be sorely missed.